okay we're gonna have a look at um, building the jigs for the four frequency um, 12 meter dome um, there's four jigs to make on this uh, so it's a bit of a step up in complexity from the usual stuff and they're also much bigger triangles um, a standard triangle looks about like this you know something like that you can uh, easily cut that out of a um, 8 by 4 sheet no problem um, but these are going to be much bigger these are going to stand about the height of, uh, of me so we can't cut them we won't fit them out of a sheet on sheet of uh, 8 by 4 sheet so what we do is we cut them in cut an 8 by 4 sheet into strips 4 or 5 inches wide doesn't really matter and then what we do is on the plans it'll show you the angle between all of the sides of the triangles that we're making. Um, this is an equilateral one, so it's straightforward. Uh, so what we do is we cut this down at 30 degrees, and that produces the 60 degrees that we need for each corner. Now, what I've done with the, this uh, wood is I've measured the length that we need from one tip to the other, but I've added 10 mil to all of the patterns, so that all the patterns will be 10 mil bigger all round. The reason for that is that um, if that's a long joint we might get that a little bit out there might be some uh, adjustments to make and what I'll do is I'll mark very accurately inside with a pen the, the correct exact measurement. So these are all going to be about 10 mil bigger than we need. Uh, right, I've, I've cut them into strips and I've cut some of the angles. What I'll, I'll show you next is the um, how we join them together uh, to make the the initial pattern uh, and then on from there to make the jig. Right, this is our first triangle we're going to make up. Um, I've cut some bits of plywood uh, from the offcuts um, and I've test fitted it together. You can see uh, it's, it's nice and clean all the way down here, you know, a little bit off at the end, but uh, if there's big gaps you, you might think you've got something wrong. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to glue up a plywood patch under there. The pattern's upside down. We'll, we, one side has to be flat, uh, but it's okay to put um, ply on the other side. So we'll glue that under there now. Right, then we'll let that dry and we'll glue the, the other two sides in the same way. Right, I've um, made all the jigs and I'm starting to convert them into patterns now. Um, what I did was uh, I used the pin mark patterns. Uh, it's a piece of timber with a nail in, like that. Uh, to make them to mark the length there's four different ones uh, and then what I've done is I've marked them on here at very accurately with thin lines you can see, see where I put the pin in there um, you can also see how the initial pattern it's been made a little bit bigger uh, but because it's gone together it's not a hundred percent accurate this outer pattern but the these lines are totally accurate that's why I advise to make the pattern a little bit bigger um, and mark your, your true triangle inside that accurately. That's the uh, first one um, and I've got three more to make the same. This is the, uh, I'm using heavy stud for the inside because um, this, this pattern will take a bit of stick and I'll be making more than one dome. Uh, you don't probably have to make it this big. Um, 
this will also have a uh, strut triangle frame on the inside and that's what these um, lines here are for we're gonna I'll show you that bit later right um, let's show you um, building one triangle this is all my angled molding with the bevel on you see this see down there it's got a slight bevel on it uh, and I've cut the angles on here so, it's a much bigger pattern than normal so it's a little bit more tricky in the workshop um, right there you go hold this piece on here and then slide this one up till it touches then clamp that then you can just work your way around screwing because it's such a big pattern we'll cut the end off um, as we go around rather than doing it last just stick the back of the saw on to make sure that you've um, cut this off accurately I've actually got a little What you should aim to do is to scratch this piece of wood here with the saw as it comes down. Try and scratch this because if it's not scratching it, it means that the saw's that way a little bit and you end up with the, the wrong angle on the end. It helps get a flush cut. Right, now we'll spin round. Let's have a look. And do the next one. See, I'm just scratching that. There's little hairs coming off. It doesn't matter if you scratch this because it's caught up. And then put the saw blade on the back. If there's a gap, you know that you've done it wrong. Just check every one as you go, uh, and you'll eventually you'll get the knack of it. Uh, the first one or two you do, they might be a bit ropey, but uh, you should get the knack of it. them doing now because this one's a 12 meter dome and this is about 1.9 meters um, it's it's too big a triangle for uh, to cover and everything else with um, polythene without having slack bits and that in it so we're going to put a subframe in we we'll do this um, on the bigger domes I've got two piles of um, stud uh, one for oh, the bottom's marked on my pattern, so one goes on the top because this this is um, an isosceles triangle. So the top is slightly smaller than the two sides, and I've got a pile of these for the two sides. Now this is uh, what I call a hex pattern, so it's slightly ver a tiny bit longer on this edge. Uh, but I've cut all of these joints at um, 60 degrees because it's so close to an equilateral triangle um, it doesn't make any difference on the joints it's less than half a degree out 
that's why you should do your um, triangles from measurement and not angles um, so if you uh, the plans will have the correct angles on it but I'll show you on here now uh, this joint here is 60 but it should be uh, a tiny bit less but it, it, it just isn't possible to machine to that accuracy let's have a, a wiggle and I mean the, these are all tight so it doesn't really make any difference I just cut the whole lot to 60 and it saves cutting this one's a tiny bit less that's a tiny bit more that was a tiny bit less this is a tiny bit more but if they're all 60 you just cut the whole lot the same so it does save a bit of time uh, right I've nipped nip this tight because what we don't want is any bows in this piece of wood this has to be kept straight so I've clamped that to the pattern to make sure that it's exactly straight and these all fit in nice and tight we'll screw them in next Right, that's finished and um, what we need to do now is uh, because it's got um, internal stud and everything it's a tight on the pattern so you'd probably have to get a lever of some sort to get it off the pattern you can usually pull the other the smaller one straight off Right, uh, that's the bottom. I've made a note of the bottom so we know that this edge is the bottom. When we lift it off the pattern, put it down on the bottom, oh, and st stack all of them the same way. Uh, and I, then I, what I do is I mark them all with the uh, pattern. Uh, this is a H, and I also mark the top because these ones are so close to being um, equilateral that if you turn them over you can't tell which way around they are with a with a um, pentagon pattern which is this one here you can easily see that there's a short side on it I think that one's uh, yeah that's an equilateral triangle that one so on the equilaterals it doesn't make any difference you just mark them up as an E uh, and they go any way around but this one you'll need to know and uh, try and mark all the sides as well you need to know which which is which pattern and which is the top because when you build it it'll make it a lot easier we're going to deal with a couple of issues here at this point um, I want people to say oh you haven't told us the angles that I need to cut my timber at uh, I've started to do that now where I, uh, I show the angles but you don't really need to know the angles um, hang on, I'll just move it. Let's see. Um, on see on this one I've put a frame round um, this cut angle is that so you can just put your angle gauge on the corner uh, and any um, cut angle coming into that corner will be uh, is that so you don't need to know what it is you just need to take a measurement off like that put that on put that there get turn the saw or put put your saw angle to it whatever you whatever you, which way you're cutting it um, and that's and also 
if you're looking for the noggins, that's the same angle there. Okay, uh, another issue people have is they go, uh, I don't usually put um, cutting lists. The reason being is that obviously this is a 12 meter dome. I can produce the same plans in 11 meter, 9 meter, 14 meter. So that's a whole bunch of different cutting lists. And when you're cutting timber, you don't really want to know how many length of meters it is. You want to know how long each piece is. Because if you're buying wood in 8 foot lengths, uh, and you know that one of your spars is four feet you know that you'll get two out of each length so you can then just say work out how many lengths you need uh, also uh, the, the, there is a really simple way of working out uh, how much wood you need for the whole dome it's incredibly simple that's why I don't actually put cut in this because it's very easy to work out for yourself and if you work it out yourself you'll understand more about how, what timber you're using and how you can save timber right this is the four frequency dome so how much it's like how much wood am i going to need for that it's dead easy couple of facts one uh, it has 120 triangle frames so we know there's 120 tri triangle frames that's one frame this is an we'll, we'll deal with this central one it's upside down at the minute so that's one frame so we know we have one side top side and that other side uh, we can measure them so these are, well I know that they're 1.9 meters um, and we know that this is ha roughly half that. So what I did was I cut all of these at 2 meters and I cut all of these at 1 meter. Now some of the triangles are slightly smaller but it just means the difference between that much waste and that much waste. It's not a big deal so don't worry about it. So what you do is you take the biggest frame and you measure the side and you know that you've got half, uh, not all of the domes have this central support, but if it does, you know to add half as much on again. So, uh, I, I need, there's three pieces at two meters, so multiply that by 120, uh, 243, that's 360 two meter lengths I'll need, and I'll also need 360 one, me one meter lengths of these. Now when I buy timber, I buy 3 by 2 I cut it down the centre and I get two pieces from each 3 by 2 So that means I can half that. So that makes it 180 3 by 2s So I need 180 3 by 2s uh, to make these. And I need 360 1 meter lengths of 2 by 2 to make these. And then if, if you're making a bigger dome or a smaller dome, you can work around that. What I did was I um, got I used 4.8 meter lengths so that means I got two out of each length plus an 800 uh, piece spare and that, actually that 800 comes in for one of these. So um, and it doesn't hurt to have a little bit, of, little bit of spare timber. I mean I haven't got hardly any spare timber on this job but just that's a simple way of working out how much timber you you need for a given dome so all you need is the edge measurements of the largest triangle everything else is a bit smaller and that is always half what that is approximately okay uh, now I've made all the frames uh, so now we'll take a look at the base uh, the base on this one uh, is a three-part base what we have is a thin just, a, just a, a, a thin base section. Uh, we have, then we have a thick base section, and then the tricky bit. It, these all have an angle on them. I'll show you this. They all have an angle cut on the top, but that's pretty straightforward. So you have a thick one, a thin one, and you get this one, which is it starts the same size as the thick one and ends up the same size as the thin one so it's got a slope down um, it, it, it seems tricky to do but it's actually not that bad to do um, what, so what you do is you put your you mark how long it is on a piece of wood um, and then you mark the thick end at this end and the thin end at that end you set your angle on the saw same as what the plans tell you and then you cut one I've got one here that's all been ready cut so it's it's thin at one end with an angle and it's thick at the other 
Now the, the easiest way to make these, or the most efficient I should say, is to make them from a thick piece of wood, like this. If you, because they have to be left and right handed as well, so if you mark on a, on a um, thicker piece of wood, you can get one out of this side and one out of this side. Uh, that means you're getting two pieces from each section of wood. You're doing one cut so you don't have to um, do lots of these angle cuts because this is a freehand cut. Um, I'll, I'll show you cutting that now.